This is the tutorial on the fatigue analysis of a structural steel member. So let's begin. Open the ANSYS workbench and double click on the static structural window and double click on the geometry to open the design modeler of the ANSYS workbench. In the design modeler, go to file import external geometry file and look for the file that says plate with circular hole or rather plate with hole dot IGS click on generate to import the part in your design modeler Close the design modeler and let's get back to the ANSYS project schematic. Double click on the model to start the ANSYS mechanical workbench. After the part is opened in the ANSYS Mechanical, click on the mesh and generate the mesh by default. Make sure the statistics of the mesh. Currently we have 121 elements and 1012 nodes for this steel plate that has a circular hole at the center. We can always refine the mesh by changing the sizing in the details of mesh. Click on the relevant center and change from coarse to fine and regenerate the mesh. Now you can see the number of elements are increased to 1487 with 10959 nodes. It is always important to refine the mesh at those cross sections where the stress concentration is expected to be higher. So let's click on the mesh, right click on the mesh and click on insert refinement. You need to select the geometry where the mesh refinement is required. So in the graphics area, let's click and using the control key, select the, select the circular edges of the hole and on the geometry, click apply so that two faces are selected. And in the refinement, change the number from one to three and regenerate the mesh. Click on the mesh to see the mesh density that is increased near the circular edges as we've selected for the refinement. Now you can also take a look at the number of elements, how they have increased up to 22,723 number of elements and 37,368 number of nodes. Now let's click on the check mark that is the view mechanical wizard and once you click on the check mark on the right hand side you would notice a window that lets you select what kind of analysis that you want to create for this particular problem so we're going to click on choose wizard and select the second option that says fatigue analysis and find fatigue life and the safety factor so let's click on that and your analysis inputs would change accordingly. <coughs> so now let's click on the insert fatigue analysis. The software will point to you where that tool is located. So expand the tools and click on a fatigue tool. The fatigue tool 
gives you the display of a constant amplitude load in this case it shows fully reversed and also it tells you what kind of mean stress correction theory that we're going to employ so for example you have uh, SN Nunn or Goodman or Soderberg or Gerber uh, fatigue life stress theory make sure that on the loading the type says fully reversed you can also change that option from fully reversed to zero based which means the loads will be acting only in one direction and not in the plus minus cycle fully reversed loading is for example if you have 100 at 100 megapascals then the loading will occur plus 100 megapascals to minus 100 megapascals so from tensile to the compressive stage <coughs> all right so right now we're gonna right click on the fatigue tool and insert life and also right click on the fatigue tool to insert the safety factor okay so now we will cl again go back to the mechanical wizard and click on the verify material you will see the details where you could change the assignment for the material from structural steel to some other material in this case we will use the structural steel material by default next comes the insert structural loads so click on the insert structural loads and you would be required to assign the loads for this fatigue analysis expand the loads option and click on force to select the two sides of this rectangular plate one at a time and apply the geometry on one face make sure we are using the units of millimeters kilogram newton seconds the third option in the units column click on the magnitude and input 100,000 kilonewtons or 1 E5 newtons for the direction make sure the loading is applied in the tensile direction click apply and repeat the procedure for the other face of the load so again go back to loads click on the force choose the side surface click on apply input the magnitude as 100,000 newtons and make sure the direction is in the tensile direction click apply and your loading conditions are complete we do not need to insert the supports for this case as the ANSYS will take care of the uh, supports by adding the weak springs to this part also click on the solution and add the total deformation as well as the equivalent von Mises stress in the fatigue tool option click on the fatigue tool and in the analysis type options change this keep the stress life as default the mean stress theory change from none to Goodman we will be using the Goodman fatigue analysis theory for this particular problem where the stress component we will include as the equivalent one miss stress now for a moment let's go back to the project schematic and double click on the engineering data so in the engineering data we are going to be using the structural steel by default make sure the outline of schematic A2 cell is open the properties of outline row is also open a chart of properties is open as well as the table of properties is also open if for some reasons these options are not visible you can always go to the view and click on these individual quant these individual terms to put a check mark in front of them so that you can visualize all this information on your screen look for the row number 12 in the properties of outline row and in in this case for the alternating stress mean stress expand the row number 12 
and in the row number 13 change the interpolation from log log to semi log on the right hand side you can see the fatigue data of the structural steel is indicated by the alternating stress curve on the y-axis as well as the number of cycles on the x-axis now take a look at this table for the fatigue analysis of the structural steel we know that this is the endurance strength endurance limit or the fatigue strength of the structural steel which is equal to 86 megapascals you can change the units from pascals to megapascals in front of the alternating stress so that you can visualize the values in the megapascals so 86.2 megapascals is the endurance limit of this structural steel which means that any part if you apply the loading conditions that exceeds above this stress strength curve above this stress fatigue life sn curve then that part it's going to be unsafe and any loading condition underneath this sn curve is going to be the safe material also if you keep the loading conditions lower than the endurance limit of this material which in this case is 86.2 megapascals the part will never fail due to fatigue and it can run infinite number of cycles otherwise if the loading conditions exceeds 86.2 megapascals then depending on where this stress intersects the SN curve those many number of cycles the cycles would be the part would be able to survive okay so now let's go back to the ANSYS mechanical We will solve this problem by clicking on the solve option and wait for the analysis to be completed. Once the analysis is complete, you can take a look at the warnings messages given by the ANSYS. First warning says an iterative solver was used for this model, however a direct solver may enhance the performance consider specifying the use of direct solver so let's go to the analysis settings and in the solver type that says program control let's click on the direct solver and solve the analysis one more time as you can see that warning message disappears and we have only one warning message that says one or more bodies may be under constraint and experiencing a rigid body motion a weak springs have been added to attain a solution which is okay since we have not specified any support and the software have added the uh, weak springs to avoid the rigid body motion let's take a look at the results let's take a look at the total deformation in my case I can see as expected the deformation is taking place along the axial direction or the tensile direction uh, which is equal to 0 0.08 millimeters. The equivalent stress or the one miss stress is equal to 108.86 megapascals which is the maximum value and you can see the region at the stress concentration where that maximum stress uh, is generated in this part let's take a look at the life you can see the minimum life or the minimum number of cycles the part is going to survive is approximately 2.6 times 10 to the power 5 number of cycles the reason that this is a minimum number of life that this part will survive is because the stress in this case generated is more than the endurance limit of this part which is higher than 86.2 megapascals in this case we got this stress amplitude as 109 or almost 109 megapascals so let's take a look at the safety factor the safety factor is equal to 0 0.79 which is really easy to calculate based on the Goodman theory uh, which is equal to 1 over fs that is equal to 
the mean stress divided by the ultimate strength of the material plus the stress amplitude divided by the uh, fatigue strength of the material. We can also do another analysis on the same problem. If you click on the fatigue tool, at this time we will change the loading type from fully reverse to zero based and use the Goodman mean stress theory for the fatigue analysis and let's try to solve this problem again. Once you look at the solution and click on the equivalent stress, again you can see the stresses which are induced because of the 100 kN loading condition. In this case it is zero based so the loading condition is applied from 0 to 100 kN and then again 0 to again going to 100 kN. So it is not fully reversible but it is just reversing it uh, from 0 to 109 megapascals which is not as severe as we looked at in the previous case for the fully reversible loading conditions. So we think the life of this part should be better and the safety factor should be higher than the previous case. Let's take a look at it. So you can see the minimum number of cycles is 1 E6 number of cycles. Safety factor is definitely more than 1 which is 1.337 in this case. You can verify from the theoretical calculations that the safety factor is equal to 1.3 based on the Goodman theory. Since the stress amplitude is half of 108.8 megapascal because the loading is going from 109 megapascals to zero and then again going back to 109 megapascals so the stress amplitude is equal to around 54.5 megapascals so the safety factor will be equal to the fatigue strength divided by the uh, by the stress amplitude which in this case it's equal to 86 point two divided by fifty four point five mm -hmm. and that comes out to be one point three three. That ends our tutorial for the fatigue analysis.